Another week down, another five candles closer to our macro resistance, our macro halt line for AMC. Um, this week was pretty solid, you know, chop city, as I, as I mentioned multiple times, we're going to be pretty much chopping sideways, low volume, barcode price action, until we reach our macro resistance, where we could expect to find some volatility. Um, GameStop red today, AMC green today, SPY, new 52 week high today, broke and closed above 460, high of day 460.74 I believe, um, that looks great. I mentioned in my video yesterday, SPY was knocking on the door of 460 and when it reached it and broke through it, that would be confirmation of a bullish market. Very strong resistance here at 460 and not much price action above it. This is less than three months of price action right here. All time highs on S&P 500. Um, so there you have it, a break and close above 460. High of day 460.74, almost pushing 461. Um, this looks great. I don't have the symmetry up, but you could see it very clearly. All time highs here and the cup that you have the pullback to 409, the pullback to 409, and then back up to the top. Um, so this looks good. You know, really not much to say here. We're going to be, I'm looking for a gap up on Monday. You know, we don't have to gap up on Monday. I don't expect to pull back anymore here. I'll get into that in the, the next slide. Uh, it should be continued upside here, and I'm looking for a gap up. It's pretty much air above us. There's two levels of resistance now, uh, 464 and 470 are the next two levels and the only two levels of resistance overhead for S&P 500 currently. Uh, so this looks good. Getting into the micro a little bit now, the one hour. Um, so this was SPY climbing up to the, the, the mid 450 range here and pretty much just playing ping pong in between this 450, 450 and 460, uh, 456, 50, sorry, 454 and 456. So we'll just say that. So coming up to it, rejecting off of it, and pretty much just playing ping pong here, up to 456, down to 454. So bounce as support, reject, break through, fail, come all the way down to 454, bounce, reject, bounce, reject, over and over. This was last Friday, that pump that we got to 460, pulled all the way back down to 454, reject, support, reject, break through again, fail again. Bounced on 454 as support, broke 456, tested this morning, pre-market this wick that you see here, confirmed, bounced off, and broke and closed above 460. Um, I don't see any reason to pull back again into this range. Uh, having now got, gone through all of this price action, consolidating here, establishing support, and breaking through the resistance, and now closing over 460 uh, to end the week, I don't see any reason whatsoever for SPY to pull back down into this range. I'm not saying that it can't. Uh, I'm just saying that it probably won't. And we're going to be looking for a gap up on Monday. Um, and more likely than not, we will be seeing, and you know, don't hold me to this, but 470 is on the table this week for S&P 500, especially if we gap up. Um, like I previously mentioned, the next two levels of resistance, the only two levels of resistance on SPY right now, uh, to the upside is 464 and 470. Um, and this is that 470 move right here. So I would not be shocked whatsoever to gap up Monday, see continued upside throughout the week to 470. I do expect to reject there though and pull back to test on 460 as support. It makes more sense to me to break, uh, break this range now that we closed over it, 460, break this with a little bit more um, follow through momentum to the upside potentially to 470 and then pulling back to 460 to test on this range. When we do test on this range, likely we will wick through it back into the, in the previous range below us. Um, but we'll talk about that when the time comes. The point being here is that the market is very, very bullish. S&P 500 will be seeing all-time highs in the very near future, um, along with everything else. So this looks good. Macro looks amazing on SPY. Micro looks amazing on SPY. Spent almost a month here consolidating. Finally broke the range and closed over 460. Looking for a gap up and continuation next week. That's that. Getting into AMC. Uh, same shit, different day. 
So macro perspective here, your bull cycle of AMC, your January and June equivalent V-shape and macro break, your January and June equivalent V-shape and macro break, that is the bull cycle of AMC, and then your bear cycle of AMC right here on both sides, the green, red, and blue. This is where you're finding your descending resistance, your macro resistance. This was the macro resistance of the previous macro, the previous cycle of AMC, and the current macro resistance is right here. It's the exact same trend line, exact same touch points in the green and the red, all the way down to the flat portion, same touch points. I don't have the 200 here, forgot to put it, uh, but this looks good. So again, bull cycle, bear cycle, bull cycle, bear cycle. The bear cycle is just January 15th over and over again, breaking to the downside, lower highs and lower lows all the way to your reversal point, which is your third bottom all-time low of the flat portion, which is where we are now uptrending off of that um, and pretty much right above zero. So that's that. Now, zooming in a little bit more now into the downtrend itself and the boxes are all labeled here. I have the 200 EMA on this slide. So the previous macro of AMC is on the left and the current is on the right. So the green, this is coming down and then bouncing up to find your macro resistance trend. And then over here, same thing, coming down, bouncing up to find your macro resistance trend. Same crosses of the 200 EMA. In the red, crossing the 200 to the downside and then back up to the trend. Same thing over here, back up to the trend. The blue, you do not touch the resistance nor the 200 EMA on both sides. You do not touch the resistance nor the 200 EMA uh, aside from falling through it. And then into the flat portion, this is where the 200 EMA meets that tri-peak move coming up from your first bottom, as you see it here, the tri-peak move. And then you get the W move, which breaks you out of the resistance and also pokes above the 200 EMA. And then failing right there, it's a fake out, pulling back into the resistance for your second and third bottom, uh, your third bottom all-time low landmark, which is the reversal point of the downtrend. Uh, and we're looking for this, a straight line into our squeeze. Price target, $1,400, 3.618 FIB. Uh, zooming in a little bit more now into the flat portion. So we're going to be looking at the flat portion of the previous macro and the flat portion of the current macro. I'm going to show it the exact same way that I showed it yesterday. Uh, so I have all the noise removed from this chart. And the white trend line is your macro resistance. It's the exact same trend line from the last slide and the slide before that, the macro. Um, same touch points, same everything. The only difference being the current macro that we're going through right now. This trend line is extremely strong resistance as it is our macro halt line as well. Um, the previous macro of AMC coming down here, we did not get halted once touching this trend. Um, and we've been halted every single time that we've touched this trend in the current macro. And this fake out move is very good indication of what is behind this trend. Um, a lot of buying pressure and a lot of volatility to the upside. All right, but just going over the flat portions now of all cycles, I did it yesterday really quickly. I'll do it again, dropping down to your flat portion here, um, choppy gap up three peaks poking above the 200 EMA. Over here, same thing, dropping down to your flat portion, choppy, gap up, three peaks, poking over the 200 EMA. You don't make it to the resistance on either side. You then come down into the W move, which pokes you out of the resistance. It's a fake out. So the W move pokes you out of the resistance over the 200 EMA. Uh, again, that's a fake out. It does not come as high as where you're dropping down to the flat portion on either side, but it is higher than the third peak here in the red. And then from there, you fail, you come all the way back down, and you get your second and third bottom. Your third bottom all-time low is the reversal point. You uptrend from that, and that is where we are. So your second bottom, the tri-peak, and then your third bottom all-time low. Your second bottom, your tri-peak, and your third bottom all-time low. I mentioned yesterday, if it helps, look at the area under the move rather than the candles itself. Um, it's the exact same thing. And then your third bottom is slightly lower than your second bottom, uh, which is your reversal point. And then from there you form an uptrend and you gap up January 15th, end of day, 
which was a Friday. I'm going to point that out right now. That was a Friday, January 15th. The V included, and that following Monday or Tuesday, because the market was closed that Monday in 2021, um, that following, we'll just call it Monday, the first day of the week, you gapped up. And that is your macro break on AMC. Uh, also, I forgot to mention, when you poke through the resistance, the fake out move here in the green, um, the 200 EMA at that point comes outside of the resistance, the macro resistance on both sides. This chart's perfect. Uh, also, the flat portion of the previous macro began roughly 2020 and ended roughly 2021. Uh, so roughly a year there. And the current macro, same thing, starting roughly 2023 and is going to be ending roughly 2024. Now, before I move on from this, I mentioned this yesterday, I'll mention it again. We are meeting our macro resistance, our halt line here in white, very, very soon. Um, before January, we will be meeting this trend. If we went all the way to the end point here, this is end of December, first day of January, if we were just dead flat at 705, I don't expect that to be the case. I'm expecting upside next week. This is an uptrend, higher highs and higher lows here. I expect that to re remain the same. Now, I covered this yesterday. I'll really quickly say it again, and I don't think this is the case. I'm just being transparent. There's two ways that this can play out. So number one being we break this trend to the upside and straight line to the fucking moon, like we saw in January 2021. The other scenario is we meet this trend line again and we reject off of it to the downside. I don't see a world where that happens. It does not make sense to come any lower than where we are right now. Uh, fundamentally, we're undervalued as it is. It does not make sense to come any lower than this. Uh, but if in the case um, that we did, which you know, I would honestly bet my life on it that we don't, uh, we will be heading towards zero. And this macro resistance trend here in white intersects zero January 31st, 2024, which is... Uh, less than two months away, roughly a month and a half. So again, the options are very simple. We break the trend to the upside, squeeze to $1,400, um, or we hold off the trend and go to zero. So that's it for that. Now, moving on to the channel. So your second and third bottom, your third bottom is your all-time low. That's where we are now. From your third bottom, you form a very choppy uptrend, like I previously mentioned, until you get to January 15th, end of day, which was a Friday, uh, which is where we are now, chopping in an uptrend, and then you gap up. So we're going to zoom in on the micro now on the channel. Uh, so this is 2021 on the left, the previous macro, and the current macro on the right. It's not going to be perfect. This is micro tracking. Um, it's never going to be perfect. It's not going to look identical, but this is very similar. So from your third bottom all-time low, which is your reversal point, it's the bottom, you form an uptrend into your squeeze from there. So you come up and you find your resistance, which is the top of the channel, which we did here from 652 up, that we found that resistance, rejected off of it, coming back down to support now, and then bouncing back up to the channel again, as you see here. Rejecting off of it again, you get your chop zone here below the support. Rejecting off of it here, you get your chop zone below the support. Then you get January 15th, which brings you back to the top of the channel one final time. And then you reject one more time and come back down to support. Actually wick through it here, um, and we broke below it here. So uh, to put it another way, you know, to very simply what this is, is it's just three iterations of January 15th. So you have up, down, up, down, up, down. And then over here, same thing. Up, down, up, down, up, down. And then January 15th, end of day, the V, which is where we are, which I mentioned multiple times, is an inverse head and shoulder. Uh, and this kind of looks like it's forming here, where this would be the left shoulder, the head, and now the right shoulder is forming. Um, you gap up from that. Above the channel, that is your macro break on AMC. And from there, it, the price action starts to get a little bit more volatile. And then you break the trend, the macro resistance, and it's a straight line to your squeeze from there. So this looks good. Now, I'm not saying for certain that AMC is gapping up on Monday, but it looks like SPY is going to be gapping up on Monday. And it looks like AMC is going to be gapping up on Monday. I'm not saying it has to. We could see intraday uptrend back to claim the channel and then gap from there. Um, or we can just gap from where we are now. 
it's definitely on the table. A gap up for AMC on Monday is pretty much the point here. So really quickly getting into the indicators, uh, weekly perspective up top. Uh, so we have volume, OBV, and RSI. So RSI is still oversold. It's sitting below 30 right now on the weekly. It's been oversold for roughly six months since July. This looks amazing. Um, you know, the RSI has to come back up here towards the overbought area. And when it does, uh, it will be during the, the squeeze. Um, volume. So I mentioned this a few times, actually. In the downtrend, you're descending volume all the way through the downtrend until you get to the flat portion where it starts to pick up a little bit. Into your squeeze is the start of a new macro, all-time high volume. And then again, descending volume all the way through the macro until the end, flat portion, it picks up. Um, and right now, we are sitting at near all-time high levels on the volume. And through all of this selling, I mentioned this multiple times as well, from all-time highs, 350, 400, whatever it was, all the way down, the green volume has outweighed the red all the way through this. The buying volume has outweighed the selling volume all the way through the macro. And that is why OBV is still sitting at all-time highs. Um, so we legged up in January. We legged up in June, pretty much hovering here at all-time high levels. Descending resistance broke out, retested, bounced off a new all-time high on the OBV. Uh, in the middle of the tri peak, and then pulling back one final time to retest and finding a bounce this week. This week was green, um, nothing special, pretty much sideways green, choppy, as I mentioned, uh, but this looks good. Indicators on AMC. Uh, the Fibonacci spiral looks amazing. I mentioned this multiple times as well. Um, the Fibonacci spiral, this ratio, controls literally everything around you. Um, Golden ratio, 1.618, it's found everywhere. Um, seeds, plants, trees, uh, the human body, DNA, hurricanes, seashells, the galaxy, spiral shape of the galaxy. Um, this ratio controls everything. And this is a very interesting chart. I mentioned this multiple times. So we're running this from the previous all-time lows of AMC to the top of the June squeeze, all-time highs, and starting the spiral at IPO. So very low volume all the way through this, all the way to the this point here where you touch the spiral, volume starts to pick up here, and you, uh, you come down here into your flat portion, play it out, volume starts to pick up at this point into your squeeze in January is all-time high volume, and then your June, and then it's descending volume all the way through this, all the way through the downtrend, descending volume, halting every single time we've touched the, the top of the Fibonacci spiral. Uh, so the top of the Fib spiral is also our macro halt line, the descending resistance lines, the same exact resistance. And then at the end here, breaking out of the spiral and then dropping down to test on very high volume, uh, almost all time high volume here. And just looking at this, this is your second and third bottom all-time low that you see here. Your second bottom, the tri-peak, your third bottom all-time low. That's exactly what you're seeing here. Your second bottom, the tri-peak, your third bottom all-time low. And you can very see, uh, it's very clear here, this is curling up. And when it does curl up, uh, and we really don't need to go far, our macro resistance, our macro halt line drops 50 cents every day. Every single day, we get one candle closer to it, and every single day, um, this resistance, it's, it's almost a vertical line. It's dropping 50 cents every day, uh, is pretty much my point here. So we really do not need to go that much further here. Uh, we're talking 8 $9. That's if we don't just gap up from where we're sitting at, which is definitely on the table. So the Fibonacci spiral, that is a breakout and a retest on the Fibonacci spiral on volume. This looks amazing. GameStop. GameStop's macro begins or ends with an all-time low landmark. And then you V out of it into your bull phase of GameStop, your quote-unquote squeeze here to all-time highs, your V shape, which took forever to play out. Then you have these two peaks descending, and then you curl all the way to the downside until you reach your all-time low landmark. Once again, that you see here, you V out of it, and then you break out, and then you have your bull cycle of GameStop again, your squeeze to all-time highs. 
Um, obviously, this was on much higher volume than this run back here. Uh, and the next macro will be on even higher volume, hence the higher price targets. Uh, so there is your all-time high. Your V-shape that you see here is right here. It's instant. All the way down and then a straight line all the way back up. And then you get your 1-2 peaks descending and then curling all the way down to your all-time low landmark. Obviously, this was not going to be a new all-time low. It's an all-time low landmark, which you V out of very quickly. I mentioned that multiple times, and that's exactly what we saw. Now, getting into GameStop's micro, and I'm not going to go too crazy into this, uh, but this looks really good. So this is the previous all-time low landmark of GameStop on the left. So the V out, and then you have this W. It's a descending W, a lower leg on the right. So you V out, descending W, lower leg on the right, you curl back up, you get this double top move right at the end, and that is your macro break on GameStop. The current cycle, here you go, your all-time low landmark, the V out, and a descending W, a lower leg on the right, curling back up, and then uh, your double top move there, and then fell off end of day. So potentially, we will be seeing a gap up on GameStop next week. So uh, to really quickly go over it again, SPY broke and closed above 460 today, um, consolidated uh, mid 450s for almost a month, and retested today. Uh, before we got the run to 460, we retested 455 today. I don't see us coming back down to that range in uh, the short term. So potentially, and probably likely, SPY will be gapping up on Monday. Um, GameStop looks like it is ready to gap up on Monday as well. Uh, AMC looks like it is ready to gap up on Monday as well. Now, I'm not saying that they have to gap up on Monday. They don't. We could see more intraday, choppy, bullshit price action for another week. Uh, but we are very, very... The point here being we are very, very close to seeing that gap up. I mentioned yesterday, I'll really quickly mention it again, um, from the third bottom all-time low is a slow choppy uptrend, a slow choppy uptrend, and then you gap up. That is your macro break. You break the resistance and you squeeze. So it looks like everything is ready to gap up on Monday next week. Does it have to? No. We can get more chop here, get closer to the resistance, GameStop, same story, uh, before getting the gap. This could, you know, in my opinion, this is not going to take any, this is it's not going to take until January. I don't see this getting dragged out until January. Um, this could, we could see our macro break, our gap up on GameStop, on AMC, uh, anywhere between next Monday and mid to end December. So we're getting, like I said, we're getting closer and closer to this trend line every single day. Um, so I think that is everything. Oh, also I threw this together. Uh, shit, I don't have it. Um, I pretty much did a side by side that, you know, I, I know a lot of you probably are familiar with this chart, the parabolic arc. I've seen this a million times. Um, this is legitimately GameStop's chart, the parabolic arc. Uh, I did have a side by side. I don't know where it went. Probably, probably put it in the recycle bin. I'm not even going to bother looking for it. But that is everything for the video. Um, bullish. Everything looks great. Everything looks great. Crypto is running. Bitcoin's pushing 45K right now. Uh, altcoins are running, Doge, SHIB, um, you know, Ethereum Classic pushing $22 again. Everything looks great. No complaints whatsoever. That is everything for the video. We are in a fucking bull market. We are in a bull market. Everything, not everything, but a lot of tickers, uh, cryptos will be seeing new all-time highs in the very near future. That being said, hope you guys enjoy your weekend. I will catch you guys with some update videos next week. Peace.